Hello class, and today we will be finishing up Sen's Fortress and showing you guys a few extra areas that I mentioned I forgot to show you in the last video. So for now, that's where the shortcut leads out, right up here. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So anyway, as you may recall, we gotta watch out for the firebomb thrower dude. It's really not all that damaging, but well, it still stuns us pretty good, so we're just gonna try to stay away from it for now. So if you dash as fast as you can, you can outrun most of them. Let's go ahead and grab this soul item here. And uh, run up here before the fireball hits. Here is a large titanium shard. A couple of them actually. So that'll be a plus later. And here's one of those black knights with the mace. So this, this guy drops a titanium chunk, I think. No, he doesn't. No. Well, yeah, you guys know how to fight this guy, and he's actually quite easier because you have to fire Great Scythe or the plus 10 sway hammer, depending on what you're using right now. And uh, your shield should be able to block him pretty good, depending on, and it doesn't really matter which one you're using either. So, you can see we've already, on, we've all, already almost got him all the way down. So, he still has a shield, of course, but. There, he's dead. He doesn't actually drop anything this time. He had her stuck in a wall. So here's a ladder. You can go down. And up here. There's an enemy over here called, I think, like, Prince Ricard or something. I don't know. But he has this really nice dex oriented rapier. He has a really unique move set. See? He does a two hit swing after holding it in front of him for a sec. If you do another heavy attack after using it like that, you do a you do a four hits in a row. So if if you want to use dex weapons and you want a mash attack button, this that the the rapier we're gonna get here would be the perfect weapon for you. Other than that, just stick with the great scythe if you're doing dex. So as you can see, it doesn't look terribly good at first, but does a really, really awesome move set with spam attacks and everything. Okay, so up here, this room, there's two chests with some pretty rare loot in it. There's a Divine Blessing, which is a one-hit heal everything move, and this is a rare ring of sacrifice, which is basically just a ring of sacrifice, but it cures curses as well. So there's only one really real spot we're going to use that, and that's later in the game when we fight Seath for the first time. We'll talk more about that when we get there, of course. We're not even close yet. So let's go ahead and run up here. And I just realized how dorky the arrows look, even, especially because we're not using them, so that looks better. And the arrows don't actually have any weight, so we didn't really lose much. Anyway. Let's go ahead and run up here and to the side here, up these stairs. And uh, this way. Make a right here. I'll show you guys the path to the left later. You actually can make that jump, but not if you're wearing heavy armor. Trust me, I've tried. It doesn't work. So, uh, you may, may have noticed I'm holding a sword out in front of him. That's what I like to call parry fishing basically means whenever you hit him when he's doing this he has a chance to parry you you know how parrying works right um, you just block their attack they get staggered for a second you get a critical hit so he can get critical hits on you if you don't know what you're doing there's no illusionary walls there and uh, let's run down this way I'll show you guys where the shortcut is so we're about to show you guys that so this is the shortcut, it's two uh, elevators again, but we need a specific key to open them. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get up to the boss fight room and kill the giant guys throwing firebombs at us first. So yeah, we may hear the crossbows. Now this guy's actually really weak, I'm not even sure why he's here. As you can see, he can't throw firebombs on that bridge there. Anyway, the only thing we really have to do here is kill the giant. So you go up these stairs, 
And here we can get rid of the firebombs by killing the guy who's throwing them. So he's actually fairly easy. As you can see, we're taking out quite a bit of his health. He looks harder than he is. So, especially with the Great Scythe, which does a ridiculous amount of damage and recovers really quickly when you actually hit someone with it. And he has a charge attack, but when he's done with it, he just it sits down for a while. And you might have noticed the little red sparkles there. That was our bleed effect on the Great Scythe coming in. Three hits and he gets a bleed, which is a lot of extra damage. So he dropped it to a tiny hit chunk, which lets us up upgrade our Zway Hunter to Lightning once we get there. That's good because we already broke down all the other ones for larges. It also lets us upgrade to plus 10. Uh, pl plus 11 weapons, but we're going to use it to upgrade our way hand to lightning because that is the most important thing right now. So yeah, let's just take a neat, neat, little, neat little mini shortcut here, leads us down into the stairs, and we're going to go grab that key for the shortcut. So just keep running and running. So. You're going to want to jump as far to the left as you can. Get a good running start. And there you are. If you miss time it, you're going to have to walk a long way from again. This guy's called the Crestfallen Merchant. So he sells you a large assortment of stuff. We're going to buy a couple things from him for now. So as you can see, we have some black firebomb and the green blossom. We're going to buy a couple large teenage shards so we can upgrade our Baldur shield up to the max. And we are also going to... He has, he has a lot of great swords, great axes, and pretty nice shields. He has ammo. And the Katarina steel set and Baldur sets. Thunderstone plate and spellstone plate rings. Whoa, that makes so... So yeah, there's the crestfallen merchant. He just sits there mostly. It's one of the few NPCs you meet that doesn't go directly to Firelink. Anyway... Here's some ridiculously long stairs for you guys. It leads down into the near, into the area with the key. And it's guarded by the last snake man that's actually ridiculously easy. He just backstab him once and he's dead. So anyway, here is your key to the cages. It also unlocks Big Hat Logans if you want to. Uh, but uh, it, the only one you really need to force the shortcut. It's the Flamberge. It's a great sword that has a bleeding effect. It's mostly dex related as you can see. Let's go back up the stairs. Yeah. Why do they have to be so long? Oh well. Up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Ah, uh, here we go. Alright. Now let's head back to the shortcut. Actually first, I have an item to show you guys might think I'm really stupid doing this, but uh, you, don't, you don't actually take much damage. So there. Especially if you do a roll at the end. Sniper crossbow and the sniper bolt. Basically I think it's just a longer ranged version of the sniper. Of the crossbow. Whoa, these guys do a lot of damage if you let them. Especially because we don't have much poise anymore. Um, the sniper crossbow, I believe, is more dex oriented, if possible, but I don't think crossbows scale with anything. So, from what I'm for, so from what I'm guessing, that they're just a faster version of the longer ranged version of the crossbows. Maybe do a little more damage, maybe get more headshots, but well, that's all I know. I don't have to worry about fire bombs anymore. We killed the giant, so they won't pop up anymore. Nice. So let's uh, run back up to the shortcut here, and just keep running. That poor giant down there, he'll just keep feeding firebombs, but nothing will come of it. There's actually no way to get down to that guy, you can't jump that far, and uh, ranged battle isn't that effective, I think. So anyway, we have to open the left cage first. Boo-hoo. Just uh, step in, and the door closes behind you. So it's going to lead out right on the bridge with 
the swinging things, the first one, right next to this guy. So, yeah. So, there we go. And now we've got to go, we have a few things to go upgrade now. So we're going to head back to the blacksmith, upgrade our eagle shields and boulder shields up to the max if possible. If you had spent a few more souls, you could have definitely upgraded them both, but you're going to need a few more than you already have right now, so... Yeah, as you can see, that's enough damage to kill him. And there we go. Now let's head back to the blacksmith. And actually, I missed a soul item earlier. So you can grab that here. So as you can see, we have plenty of soul items by now. So we're going to level up a couple times as well. So the goal with this build is to try and get this setup to fast roll and the other setup to be ultimate tanking skills. So we've already got our, most of our weapons fully upgraded apart from the final tier for all of them. But and our weapons and armor set, our armor sets can't be upgraded, but they'll they'll be fine, so we don't need to worry about them. As you can see, we can't upgrade the gold damage black set at all. You can upgrade the lightning weapons with chunks. Let's get the boulder shield up, and uh, let's go ahead and reinforce the eagle shield to maximum and the Balder shield as far as it will go to plus 8. That's pretty good. So he doesn't actually sell large titaniate, so we're just not going to worry about that right now. Let's get moving back. But first we have a few soul items. Let's see, that's 10,000. That's quite a bit. 8,000. I can't see the numbers either. But anyway, we're getting quite a few. It's 26,000 26, souls. It's enough for two levels. OMG. Anyway, we're still mid rolling. We'll get there eventually. So actually, let's go ahead and put the rusted iron ring back on because the part I'm about to show you actually um, it takes place on an oil slick floor which reduces your movement speed unless you have the iron ring on. So let's go ahead and run up here. And kill these snakemen as usual. So I should be using the uh, Parish Bonfire because we unlocked the shortcut. So yeah. Two jump attacks with the fire great scythe actually does get, kill them, so that's pretty nice. Up and up and up. I see that item up there. I'm pretty sure that there's an easy way to get that from the bottom that I didn't show. But if you guys want to explore, it's all up to you. So I actually died last time by falling off and losing too much health and having the snake people kill me. So I'll, I'll show you guys that later. But yeah, don't be uncareful. So, go ahead and grab your souls if you want to, or you died or something. Anyway, if we're full health, we can go ahead and uh, do a drop down attack and do a roll, which reduces the amount of damage we take. And uh, one backstab is enough to kill these guys, so I'm going to go around backstabbing them to death. So I had fell, lost most of my health, not rolled, so I was stunned for a bit. I had very little health, and these guys throw lightning attacks, so it was not a good combination. These guys love their dodging. We we'll go ahead and do a plunging attack. There. So this place is actually full of titaniite demons. Let's go see that guy. So there's four that I've counted. So you, know, you guys know the drill of finding these guys. This guy guards the scythe. So that's a. Fairly nice weapon, but 
Overall, it's just a slower, more damaging version of the Great Scythe. So for now, we're just going to stick with the Great Scythe because it has a much better moveset and we've already upgraded it to fire, meaning it does more damage anyway. So yeah. So these guys actually go down much faster with the fire Great Scythe. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to try and your other moveset, it's all up to you. Anyway, the Demon Titanite is used for upgrading boss soul weapons. If you don't, if you didn't know this already, like say if we had made the uh, the Moonlight Butterfly horn or something with the Moonlight with the soul of the Moonlight Butterfly, we could uh, we could upgrade that with Demon Titanite. It's a ridiculous range for that melee attack. So yeah, it's a little overpowered. And uh, this. Door, and this guy is fighting. Yeah. Anyway, the trick with this guy is to sit beside them. Uh, sit, sit in the nook made by their missing leg and their arm, which uh, normally when they circle leaves you in it. And uh, yeah, this uh, this leaves you safe to most of their attacks, and it gives you a pretty good target to shoot at too. There's that guy, he's gonna drop another demon titania. It's a guaranteed drop from these guys. So yeah. There's the way back up if you guys want to do that. I don't think there's any more loot in this area anyway. But um yeah. Nothing down that way. And there's actually two titania demons at once over here. One's much further down, but still. So, I'm actually going to die at this bit, but I'm going to show you guys my best efforts anyway. There's his lightning bolt. So, I believe we're actually going to switch back to our main, uh, main heavy form. And just, just to show you guys how it works. Yeah, because we can't even get close. So I'm trying really hard, but in the end, we're just going to try the heavy form and end up dying anyway. So you guys can skip ahead to the annotation if you guys know. No. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sure you guys can find the part where, I'm, where I die, but anyway. Now the other guy's catching up, and I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and switch to my sway hander form. Yeah, Arabilis is evolving. Ah. See, we still took damage from that, but it was lightning based, so yeah, not my best idea. So as you can see here, we had a little bit of health left, and even though we blocked an attack that was physical, we still took a little damage from the 95% physical resistance. So yeah, that's. Uh, so that works. So it's not really recommended. We're not going to stick with it too long. But uh, yeah. Uh, once we get it to lightning, it'll do much more damage. And we'll be using it more then. So it, it has just a little bit less like stability and has 100% physical resistance. So we're probably actually going to stick with this setup for a while actually because it's a little more economic but the lightning's way hander does way more damage so I actually end up using that I did have success with a with a strength scaling uh, ultra great sword with heavy armor and a pretty heavy shield in one of my playthroughs I suppose it would be uh, kind of uh, educational show you guys how to fight with a 95% physical resistance shield because it teaches you to avoid damage at all costs and uh, blocking isn't the, uh, the best way to deal with everything. So if you do want to level up your strength a bit more there are some better great shields that you can use like the black iron great shield which only has around 32 I think or the Artorius great shield 
actually a boss soul weapon from this guy named Sith Sif. So you can do that if you want. And uh but for now we're just gonna stick with the Eagle Shield because it has some really nice resistances apart from its physical one, and that's just so little it doesn't really, really matter anymore. Plus it'll be good to keep your health up high with the uh, vitality upgrades. So yeah, anyway. Let's go ahead and take the shortcut up. And uh, we're actually going to head back to the bonfire and return to human form so I can show you guys the, mo the best NPC in the game. So anyway, you don't want anyone following you, even though he wasn't. I'm, as you can see, he did the parry animation there, but because our great scythe is so awesome, it wasn't parried. Anyway. He drops a useless titanium shard because everything we have is already like plus 10 by now. Anyway, let's run back to the bonfire quickly. And. Yeah. Then we'll be returning to human form. If you don't want NPC help with this fight, then you don't like Tarkus. <laughs> anyway, pop to humanity. It's. it's Good to have, uh, it's good to have Tenestis. Even though we already do. Still. We have plenty of spare humanity, so. It's good to keep it up. Anyway. Yeah, the. Personally, I prefer the blue zombie look. The, uh, lightish blue ghostly look actually kind of goes with it, but it's a little too bright for the Grim Reaper set. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and head up to the boss fight area, and I'll show you guys Iron Tarkus. So, dum -de -dum -de -dum, dum -de -dum -de -dum. And up this way, and over this way, and uh, I think we can just safely ignore that guy because he's not reacting to our presence. We're actually gonna we're actually gonna move the great scythe over. Actually, that that is the scythe right there. It's uh, it's it's pretty nice, but yeah. So the regular scythe has a different move set. As you can see, it's more like the regular halberd with a much slower attacks, which leads me to believe that it's probably strength based. So. But yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and run up this way. Don't have to worry about any fire bombs anymore, which is nice. If you hadn't killed that giant, you would be getting fire bombs during the boss fight, which would be really annoying. So anyway, didn't drop anything. So if, if you were, you might have been wondering what's down in this hallway, it's a little room where most of the summon signals go. This is Iron Tarkus. He is probably the most, uh, the most liked NPC in the game from a YouTube video. Of course, he's kind of the Leroy Jenkins of Dark Souls. I will refer you to the annotation I place here for the video that made him famous. There's actually been a lot of Iron Tarkus jokes that are based off of Chuck Norris, and he is just really awesome. Yeah, he can. He's really helpful with this boss, especially because this boss is best taken down with heavy weaponry and such. And, uh, let's go ahead and switch to our heavy set now. Up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And to get our way hander out. There. We're the great shield heavy armor great sword bros, I guess. So there's the iron golem there. He looks really menacing, but with Tarkus, he's not. So Tarkus is a little nearsighted, but once he sees him, he goes for him. See how much damage he did with that? And the Iron Golem hasn't hit him once. So, the Black Iron Great Shield you see there is actually one of the recommended shields other than the Eagle Shield that we'll be using. See how much, see how little damage the... Iron Golem's doing. 
you see how much we've, we're creaming him right now. This is going really fast, which is why I didn't speed it up and the video is kind of short anyway. See, he's stumbling now. That means if you hit, hit the, if you hit his weakened leg, he will fall over. So, and almost got him right there. He falls over because his leg broke out on him. And there, that's just one dead iron golem. And Tarkus was awesome. Yeah. There's quite a few Tarkus videos online if you want to look for them. That's all you. That's used to make a really awesome strength based weapon. And, uh. Yeah, that little ring there leads to an Orlando if you want to go there. But there's no bonfire close ish. Anyway, class is dismissed. We'll talk more about an Orlando in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, see you in the next video.